The film is based on true events that occurred in South Korea. At the beginning, we meet the protagonist, Jung Tae-hoon, a well-known doctor. Due to his exceptional surgical skills, he is not free on any given day. Despite his hectic schedule, Jung makes time for his family. He has a lovely wife and a charming five-year-old son. Unfortunately, his entire life is turned upside down one day. He collapses while his son is swimming at school. The boy is taken to the hospital right away but his condition is critical. Surprisingly, his lungs have solidified, rendering them incapable of function. Jung is taken aback because his son was completely normal until the morning. The weird thing is that he wasn't able to see any symptoms despite being an experienced doctor. However, Jung's worries do not end there. That night, when his wife returns home to get some stuff, she suddenly collapses and drops to the floor. By the time help arrives, she is already dead. This rocks Jung as within a span of 12 hours, both his son and wife have mysteriously collapsed. Hence, to find answers he decides to cut open his wife and perform an autopsy. During the procedure, a distraught Jung is seen trembling, but nonetheless, he successfully completes it and comes to a conclusion. To everyone's surprise, both her lungs have also been damaged, meaning that she is also afflicted by the same condition that has left their son in a coma. The condition is known as pulmonary fibrosis, where the lungs become excessively damaged and scarred. Generally, someone suffering from it will display symptoms like extreme coughing, weakness, and loss of appetite, but in Jung's family's case, they collapsed all of a sudden. It gets weirder here, his wife conducted a routine health checkup about three months back and the results came out normal, Jung is left in utter disbelief as it is nearly impossible to contract pulmonary fibrosis and die inside three months. Later, a devastated Jung conducts his wife's final ceremonies and pays his respects that he is, joined by his sister-in-law, Han Youngju, who is an attorney by profession, the two don't talk much as they are busy crying their hearts out. The following day, despite everything that he has been through, Jung resumes duties that he is at a meeting where one of the doctors mentions that the strange pulmonary fibrosis cases are not new that I in fact, a cluster of cases were documented five years ago that a renowned physician from another city apparently wrote some articles on the problem. However, they never came to light. Hearing this, a curious Jung decides to visit the physician and learn more about the disease. After a long drive, he finally reaches the place and meets the physician. After a brief introduction, the latter takes out a file report and shows that he documented more than 100 cases in the past that he even published articles on it but the government never really paid any attention, because of this, he gave up and left his research altogether, Jung asks if there are any similarities in the patients. And the physician responds that most of them became sick in the spring season, this indicates that whatever the cause is, it originates in the earlier season, that is winter. Looking for answers, Jung gathers a list of families that lost their loved ones to pulmonary fibrosis. He then sends each one of them a personalized letter asking for information about the symptoms of the disease. However, even after a week, no one replies. So, left with no options, he decides to visit them one after another. At first, he approaches a man named Ping, who has lost his wife as both children. Jung notices that he has become a drunkard so doesn't ask much, then, he heads to an old lady's house, whose daughter is barely surviving with the help of an artificial respirator, the lady herself has contracted pulmonary fibrosis, and it appears as if she won't live for long, Jung asks her a lot of questions, but doesn't find any relevant clues. That night, while he is at home, he has visions of his wife and son, but even in the visions Jung sees them coughing profusely, when he looks around, he notices steam coming out of a humidifier, with this, Jung snaps out of his vision and realizes that both the old lady and Ping had humidifiers at their home. Since these devices are mostly used in the winter, he deduces that they are the cause of the unusual deaths, hence, wasting no time, he heads to the Korean Centers for Disease Control aka KCDC and explains the situation to them, formally, such rumors are thwarted away and no action is taken, but since Jung is a renowned and well-respected doctor, the KCDC executives decide to help him out that I in the next scene, an experiment is conducted in Jung's house to check if the humidifiers are the actual cause of the deaths. Several rats are placed inside a cage and the humidifier is left open for 24 hours. There are also several cameras placed throughout the room to ensure that no one intervenes in the experiment after a day the results come out. Jung and his sister-in-law, Jung Ju, are summoned by a KCDC employee who reveals that all the rats died during the experiment. Their lungs suddenly collapsed due to pulmonary fibrosis. The KCDC employee then explains that they didn't die of too much moisture or mold but due to the inhalation of a poisonous substance called PHMG. 
this is apparently a biocidal disinfectant that is used to clean stuff. The surprising thing is that PHMG was found in the room in a very high concentration that AS expected. Jung is surprised as he doesn't recall how that thing ended up there. So, he rushes home and starts going through his drawers in hopes of finding clues. After a bit of searching, he finds a photograph of a strange chemical called Spotless. When he stares at it, he goes into a flashback where it is revealed that Spotless is actually a humidifier disinfectant. His wife saw it on the adverts and purchased it. Jung himself liked the product as he noticed that it had been approved by the Korean Ministry of Health. The following day, Young Ju tries to use her influence to expose O2, the company that manufactures Spotless. She writes an article and shows it to her boss, but unfortunately, instead of help, she gets scolded that he claims that the move is too risky, because if their assumptions are false, they might get into trouble. Despite this, Young Ju doesn't give up and tries doing things her own way. She calls some of her contacts and asks for help in creating a buzz. She also prints thousands of pamphlets which explain how the evil company O2 is killing people. Luckily, the plan works and the news reaches the media, who in turn broadcast it throughout the country. This puts a lot of pressure on the O2 executives and they take their sweet time to come up with an official statement. Somewhere else, we are introduced to the mastermind behind the evil products and the owner of O2. Chen. He is an arrogant British businessman who has come to Korea to sell his products. Through the way he talks and treats his employees, it is evident that he doesn't care about others' well-being at all, all he cares about is money and how to grow his business empire. To handle the situation, Chen summons his assistant, CEO Wushik. They chat for a while, which makes it clear that the product, Spotless, is actually harmful. However, Chen doesn't care. And he asks Wu Shik to resolve the matter as soon as possible. If he succeeds, he will be promoted to the position of CEO. Hearing this, Wu Shik becomes excited and immediately gets to work. Elsewhere, we see that Young Ju has quit her job and moved into a new apartment where she will conduct her investigation. Since O2 is constantly denying the murder allegations, the case has been referred to court. Young Ju herself is an excellent attorney, but she knows that O2 will hire big shots against whom winning would be impossible. Hence, she visits one of her former mentors, Byung Suk, who happens to be an award-winning lawyer, legend says. That he has fought over 100 cases. And lost none of them. Young Ju enthusiastically asks him for help, and even hands him the case file which has, all the evidence against O2. Byung Suk briefly goes through it and says, I'll think about it. Unfortunately, when Young Ju reaches her apartment, she is informed that Byung Suk will not join their cause after all. This leaves her with no choice so she decides to take on a case by herself. The same day, as Young Ju, Young, and a few colleagues are discussing, many people arrive at the apartment to show support. Most of them are the ones who have been affected by the spotless disinfectant. Young is over the moon that his mission is finally coming to fruition. Later, Young Ju gathers all of them and delivers an emotional speech. She explains that their family has been destroyed by a murderous company who still aren't willing to take responsibility for their actions. Hearing this, all of them, start clapping in excitement and promise to fight against O2 until their last breaths. Then, after months of planning, the big day finally comes that IT is the court hearing and a number of people are present from both parties. On Chen's side, he has his assistant, Wu Shik, and several world-class attorneys. On Young Ju's side, all the affected families and Young are present. Soon, the trial begins, and the judge asks Young Ju to state her findings. However, before she can start, Chen's head lawyer arrives. He is revealed to be none other than Young Ju's mentor, Byung Dash Suk. It turns out that he backstabbed her and sold her case file to Chen for a lot of money. This makes winning even harder for Young Ju, as no matter what she says, the opposition will always have an answer. Shortly after, when it's Byung Suk's turn, he confidently states that his client is innocent. To prove this, he requests the judges to conduct a toxicity test on the disinfectant, spotless, the process will take a few weeks and until then, the hearing can be adjourned. Young Ju, who clearly knows that Chen and his group are trying to buy some time, advises the judges against approving it. But to no avail, the trial is now moved to three weeks later with the chances of winning the case getting narrower by the day. Young Ju visits a popular chemist and asks him to vouch for them, she wants him to. Explain to the judges that Spotless is a harmful chemical that can take the lives of people easily. The chemist, who also turns out to be an activist, thinks for a while
into pulmonary fibrosis when they inhaled the poisonous air. He knew Chen was responsible for it, but the latter never accepted it, hence, Wu Shik made it his mission to get him behind bars one way or another. Another flashback reveals that when Jung tore the envelope at the hospital, he noticed a picture of Byung Suk and his family. This immediately made him realize that Byung Suk is also a victim. So, he contacted him and the two had a formal meeting. They agreed to secretly record the toxicity test on Spotless and then hand it over to the officials. The plan worked exactly as they wanted and now, Chen is behind bars. After a few days, Jung's son receives a new set of lungs and they begin living happily ever after. Several thousand people are seen protesting outside the parliament in a final scene. They want the government to pay for their mistakes in approving toxic items that we learn in the end credits that over 20,000 people died in Korea and nearly a million suffered from health problems. Thank you for watching, and please remember to subscribe to my channel.